Hey, what's up, friends? Grant Baldwin here. Welcome back to the Speaker Lab channel, where today we're going to be doing a speech breakdown of Mark Bowden's recent TEDx talk. Now, this is a great talk all about body language. So, in addition to Mark being a phenomenal speaker, an all-around great guy, there's a lot we can learn from the content of how he presents, what he speaks about, and how we can apply that to our own presentation. So, let's get right into it. Enjoy the video. <laughs> So, you've already decided whether you like me or not. <laughs> now, it's a, uh, a very good opening line there. Um, and it's one of those lines that his introduction probably set that up a little bit because the, that line can, uh, people can laugh or people can be like, yeah, and not necessarily laugh, but they're thinking, you know, whatever their answer or whatever the response might be there. So my guess is there's something that was said in the introduction that helped kind of tee that up or something that happened right before this that kind of teed that up. Um, so um, I was also kind of wondering like whenever he came out, he stood there for a few seconds with just his hands out. So, you've already decided whether you like me or not. The other thing too that he can kind of do that like lends to the, or kind of um, uh, tells the audience that it is a joke and they have permission to laugh is a smile, right? So whatever your facial expression is, remember that the, the audience takes their cues from you as the speaker. So uh, if you're very serious, then oftentimes the audience is going to be very serious. But if you are cracking a smile, just kind of let them in and like, hey, this is a joke. You're allowed to laugh. You're allowed to react or respond in whatever way. Then they're going to typically do that. So, um, so that smile, that little smirk is what helps give the audience permission uh, to continue to laugh. And you did that within a fraction. Now, one of the things I noticed here right away um, uh, that is one of those like silly things, but it's going to be on my mind the whole time, and you may have already noticed it, is just get the cord for the microphone that's just kind of hanging out there, right? Uh, now, oftentimes you're gonna wanna just run that down your shirt. Mark is a very professional, accomplished speaker. He's a phenomenal speaker. Um, and so, uh, I don't know why he didn't do this here, um, but that would be something that you definitely want, want, to, uh, want to do of a second of seeing me. You made that unconscious choice the moment I walked on. You saw my behavior, my body language, my non-verbal behavior, my tone of voice as well that you're hearing now. And there's a part of your brain which, uh, if we take evolution as a given, and we're gonna have to take evolution as a given during the whole of my speech because all of my work relies on evolutionary psychology and behavioral evolutionary psychology and uh, neural architecture based on evolution. So, uh, it's rather like if you play catching fairies with my daughter, Stella. Uh, you okay, I want to go back for a second here. Because um, he was talking about all those like kind of evolution things. And I have to take evolution as a given during the whole of my speech because all of my work relies on evolutionary psychology and behavioral evolutionary psychology and uh, neural architecture based on evolution. So, uh, it okay, so he says he says this in kind of a, a throwaway bit of um, everything that I'm going to be talking about is based on evolution, uh, re-psychology, and evolution behavioral psycho. And so he 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 throws out some big words and big phrases there that my guess mean um, are like common language to him, but maybe confusing to the audience. So for example, for me, kind of have some sense of what he's talking about there, but I'm not entirely sure what it means. Um, so him saying that in the way that he said it almost makes the assumption of like, you know, of course you guys are, are familiar with this. Uh, of course you understand what this means, where in reality the audience may be like, I have no clue what he just referenced there. So if you're going to say something like that, you want to make sure, you want to feel really confident that the audience um, definitely knows what, what, what it is that you're talking about. Now, for this particular audience, again, um, he obviously knows much more about the audience than we do, just watching from kind of a third party perspective here. So he may already have felt confident making that assumption that the audience is familiar with those terms and with those phrases and so they, they, he doesn't have to explain them, he doesn't have to get into it. So if you feel like, okay, the audience probably isn't going to understand this, then I probably wouldn't say those terms at all because now they're just lost or they're thinking about like, I, I have no idea what he's even talking about. So something to be aware of is just really making sure that you know your audience well so that the language that you use um, matches up with where they are at and what makes sense to them. It's rather like if you play catching fairies with my daughter, Stella. Uh, you have to believe in fairies or you have to put on a really good performance 
that you believe in fairies, because otherwise it's just no fun. So, taking evolution as a given, there's a part of your brain, it sits right on top of your spine, goes up inside of your head. Some people call it the brain stem, or the R complex, or the reptilian brain, or the primitive brain, and it makes snap judgments about everybody around it. And everybody around you uses that part of their brain to make snap judgments about you. And based on behavior, it decides, should we approach this person? Are they going to be good for us? Or should we retreat because they're going to be a huge risk? In fact, if, if I open this idea out a little bit more, there are simply four categories that your primitive brain has for everybody else around it. So as I walked on, there were four potential categories for me. I came on stage, I start behaving, and your primitive brain says, is Mark giving us some minimum specifications based on 500 million years of evolutionary data that he's possibly a friend for us? Yeah, is he going to supply to us? Do we see some signals that give us that gut reaction that this is going... Now, obviously we're going to be talking about the, um, uh, how he is presenting, what's working, what's not working, some things he might tweak or adjust or things that you can apply to your next presentation. But this is also the type of talk that would be really valuable for any speaker to be paying attention to in terms of their own body language. So whenever you go speak, whenever you walk out on stage, everything that Mark's describing here um, is very, very true for any speaker, yourself included. So when you go speak, when you go present, as soon as you walk out, the audience is immediately making assumptions and judgments about you. Now, it may, may not be fair, may not be right, may not be accurate, but we all do it. So, something to be aware of, of everything he's going to be covering and talking about can be applied to us as speakers in terms of the presentations that we give and how we interact with and connect with an audience. Going to be good. He's a good person. And if, if you put me into that friend category, you're now cherry-picking from all the data that I've got, using your neocortex, which is about 200,000 years old, pretty new, using that neocortex, cherry-picking all the data that fits your brain stem's theory and assumption about me being a friend, okay? Now, I could come on and you might pick up some minimum specifications that Mark is an enemy to me, a predator. Now, I'm not trying to do those, but if they accidentally happened, you'd then put me into predator category. You do the retreat response instead of the approach response that you do around the friend category. And then you send a message, all unconsciously, all unconscious choices to your neocortex saying, go and get me all the data that proves Mark is the enemy to me. Of course, the neocortex might go, hey, I, I don't really know this guy, and he's not really said very much uh, that I can discern so far, so I'll just make up a load of stuff about him. I'll just make up some stories and some narratives that makes him bad, yeah? Equally so, if I come on and I trigger friend with your brainstem, you equally, if you can't find any data that makes me friend, you just make up a whole bunch of stories about me that make me really good. Now, the third category, I come on, I behave, and for some reason, you think, ah, Mark, potential sexual partner for me. <laughs> so, Okay, all great facial expressions. And, and, and so part two things that made that funny, it made that work, is the pause. So he could have just said it and could have kept moving on, right? But the pause there and then the facial expressions of just like the confusion, like he's, he's surprised at the audience's reaction there, right? And I'm assuming he's going to make some type of line about that now. When I do this, not usually that much laughter. Exactly, <laughs> good, very good. Okay. No, look, obviously I'm not trying to get into that category with you. My, my wife's over there, Tracy's over there. Hello, Tracy. So, uh, you know, <laughs> not, not trying to get in that category. But these things can happen by accident. For example, your brainstem is looking for things like, uh, does Mark look a little bit like me? Is he like me? Does he look to be kind of like one of my tribe, one of my group, one of my gang, one of my company? Almost my family, but not quite because, you know, genetics says that wouldn't be very, very useful for us. It wouldn't play out well. So, is he like me? Is, uh, does, does his hair look good? Uh, does it look like it has good mineral content in it, so it's got good color? You're, you're actually stroking your hair as, you're, as I'm talking about this, aren't you, <laughs> madam? 
I can, I can read people right from here. Yeah, don't look coy now. Don't look coy. Nothing happening here, Tracy. Not, nothing going on. <laughs> nothing going on. Good interaction. Nothing going on. So uh, does it look like it has good mineral content in it? And does it have- Part of what makes that, that moment good is for a TED Talk, a TED Talk is very scripted and it's very, very polished. Now this is, again, Mark is a very good professional speaker. He's probably given variations of this talk multiple times before to a variety of different audiences. So it's, it makes it a very polished, dialed in talk. But that little break and in interacting with that audience member, like that is a raw, real um, moment that is not scripted, right? He doesn't know who's in the front row there. He doesn't know what that interaction, my guess is maybe he's done something similar to that before. And so that's why that, that little bit worked well. But for an audience, they feel like, ah, there was a break from the script and that was a raw, real moment that happened here. And so it feels like we were all got to be a part of this thing. Um, so those type of moments are really, really powerful and effective for an audience. Does it have a shine to it? Because that would mean there's probably a good omega-3 fatty acid diet. And therefore, I come from a land where there's good resource and I look a bit like you. So if we were to mate and there was offspring, well, they'd grow up with good genetic code and in a land where there's opulence and food, okay? That's why we have those conditioner ads with the little flick of the hair and all of that, yeah? Um, oh, there's also with the, with things like the, 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 the pickup guys called peacocking, which is, you know, where you've got, you know, beautiful colors that flash, yeah? <laughs> Again, for me, this is just style. <laughs> so, if I come, now here's the important bit, here's the important bit, because if I come on and I don't trigger friend or enemy or potential sexual partner with you, which for those I've triggered that, you might want to start an orderly queue, just around there, sometimes <laughs> it goes around the whole block, but that's okay. Uh, if I haven't triggered those, here's the important thing for us here today, you are now indifferent to me. And here's what you're hearing. <laughs> and your mind is off imagining the potential enemies or friends or sexual partners. Now, there are seven billion people on the planet right now. What do you think is the default category for anybody new that you meet on this earth? Indifferent. Absolutely. You are pre-programmed to be indifferent to the seven billion people on this planet right now. And here's my problem. I don't know, I don't, many of you out here today, I mean the majority, there's, there's Tracy and Jennifer over there, and that's always good, yeah. But uh, the rest of you, they're my friends and family, uh, but the rest of you, I don't know. You don't know me, which means you're designed to be indifferent to me right now, and I have a really important message for you today. But evolutionary psychology says, and behavioral psychology says that you're just not going to pay attention to me unless I can get in the category of friend with you. And so that's what I've been doing. All the time I've been on here so far, I've been Very giving good. you the signals to your primitive brain that will trigger you to cause me to go into friend category with you and cherry pick from all the language that I've given you, only the stuff that is good. And if you couldn't find anything good, you've been making it up in your head. So I just want to let you into the secret, because I want you to be able to do this, you know, with your friends and family and at work and wherever you want to do this kind of thing. I think it should be free to all. So here's what I've been doing. Look, you know all this stuff. This stuff's easy. The smile. Okay? Smile. It's a universal signal across the planet, okay? It's the same. Whatever, whatever place you come from, whoever you were born to, or whether you were born at the top of a mountain or down by a lake, doesn't matter your country, doesn't matter who your parents were, everybody smiles the same. The muscles here tighten to pull up the sides of the lips, but that's not enough. <laughs> Friend, enemy, or potential sexual partner? <laughs> For those of you at the back who are a distance from me, you're indifferent to me right now. But these people down the front in close proximity, almost certainly in personal space or social space here, yeah, you are getting triggered with the minimum specifications for a predator, which is not the full signal. Yeah? Half signal, insufficient data. When insufficient data, your primitive brain defaults to negatives. I can't do a half smile. Yeah, I can't do a teethy smile either. That's get out of my territory. 
Yeah, I bite. So I need to narrow the eyes here, which will cause wrinkles to happen here. I can't flash this signal to you either. I can't just go like that. <laughs> We know that the smile must build over three seconds, and it must sustain for about three seconds. Otherwise, it's insufficient data, and your primitive brain goes, ah, predator. It doesn't get the full signal. Better be safe than sorry. The fight and flight system would rather judge me as a predator when I'm not and behave as if I'm a predator just to be safe. So if I can sustain this and build this over about three seconds, narrow those eyes and get that smile and get eye contact with some people, they'll smile back at me. Yeah, there we go. Good. That's good. Now, what I add to this is called the eyebrow flash. Notice how he slowed down and his tone and his voice quieted there in that moment, right? Because whenever you're speaking, the, uh, oftentimes we think that um, we have to speak fast, or we have to speak loud, or we have to speak quiet, or we have to speak slow. But using the variance there is what can cause an audience to, to lean in. So especially like whenever you slow down and you speak a little bit quieter, then it signals to the audience that what I'm talking about is a, like a, a significant, meaningful piece. And so it causes the audience, be, partly because you're speaking a little bit quieter, to want to lean in. Wait, what is he saying? I want to make sure I catch this. So him slowing down and making eye contact with a few people creates like this bond and this connection with the audience. So really well done there. Okay, the eyebrows <laughs> flash up. In fact, sometimes I sustain it for a long time. Yeah? And this is a universal signal for, I recognize you, I know you, you're my friend, you're a friend of the family. You can do this walking down the street. You walk down a street like this and you go, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, it triggers their primitive brain, and they're like, oh, hey, hey, good to meet you. When was it we last, yeah, no, it was last week, wasn't it? And how, yeah, how are the kids? And, and, and after about five minutes, they're like, so where do I know you from? And you're like, you don't, bye-bye. <laughs> and off you go, fantastic, you can try this. Here's the really important one, here's the really important one is, I show you. No tools, no weapons, empty hands. It's a universal signal, okay, for I come unarmed. We're if Darwin was right, we're descendant from ground-dwelling mammals. As the forests of Africa receded during climate change, yeah, the plains started to open up. The ground-dwelling mammal decided, I will stand upright. Didn't do it in a few hours. Obviously, it took hundreds of thousands of years. Stood upright. When it stood upright, Great, it had control of the hands now, that's really useful. I can be tactile, I can manipulate the world around me. But also now, my belly area with lots of soft, delicate organs in is not protected by the ground. That means under stress, I better protect that. And if I'm not under stress, if I'm not a predator and you're not a predator, then I display this area to you with no tools, no weapons. I call this area the truth plane, because this is where you'll get stimulated and triggered at an unconscious level to choose me as being honest and truthful and good to be around. And if I smile with that as well and raise my eyebrows, <laughs> you all go, Mark could read the telephone directory to us because you cherry pick the numbers that you were thought were great in it. Now, at this point, what people usually start to think is, actually, Mark, I'm getting a little bit disappointed now. Yeah. Because you're kind of manipulating us, aren't you? Yeah? And, yeah, I absolutely am. <laughs> and you say, Mark, why can't you be honest? Yeah, why can't you just be truthful? Why can't you just be authentic with us? You know, Mark, you've got some great ideas. Just deliver them how you like, build it, and they will come. Well, I'm telling you, they are not going to show up. They're going to watch Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah, it's the final episode on Sunday. It's a good show. It's a great show. Yeah? And here's the thing. If I was really authentic with you right now and didn't use the behaviors that I've learnt and 
become highly skilled in in order to become a, a good speaker around you, if I don't use my countermeasures to the fight and flight system, as I'm, I've decided not to do now, you'll see I'm not a good speaker, I'm just highly skilled in technique. In fact, if, if I were to be honest about this and authentic with you, and by authentic I mean that for me, authenticity is you know what's good for you, you know what's bad for you, and, and you will do what's good for you and right and feels right for you at an instinctual level regardless, because you want to be you. You want to be you regardless of, of the prizes or punishments out there, okay? He's pacing back and forth a lot right now. This is kind of all of a sudden he just started doing this. I don't know if he's in, this is intentional. I kind of think it could be, like maybe he's going somewhere with this. Um, let's find out. If I was being truly authentic with you, I would not show up for this. <laughs> and I'm not joking. That's, that's a reality. I wake up, in, I do this professionally, by the way. So I've already done one of these this morning for an hour and a half over in Niagara. They put me on after Chris Hadfield. <laughs> He's a Canadian spaceman national hero. Thanks for your programming. I wake up in the morning and I go, the last thing I want to do at an instinctual gut uh, level is to stand in front of a bunch of people who I don't know, who I have no data around because I can't see them, and, and put out there my life's work in front of them for, to, to, for them to criticize if they want to. That's not what I want to do. And when I start to get that feeling, and if you really want to see the authentic me, the real me, because build it and they will come, when I start to get the feeling that you don't respect the past... Has anybody here... <laughs> has anybody here written three books on body language and behaviour? I'll just answer for you. No! <laughs> No, this is really, really good where he's doing this in a way that he's being serious, but he's also being doing it in a playful way. So it gets a laugh and it gets a reaction as he's kind of building up some aggression. He's building up some frustration here. Uh, this, is, this is really good. So that you should judge me at all is stupidity on your part. This is the authentic me. This is what I really feel. And here's the reality. You're safe here because you've got this stuff in front of you. Let me kick there. But if I came up close and showed you the real signals of predator, which are the real signals I want to display in front of this kind of large crowd, I guarantee you don't like me so much now, do you? So. <laughs> Good transition. Good transition. That's great. <laughs> He's going back, call back with his, with his facial. This stuff works so well. <laughs> so, I choose my behaviors around you. And I'm going to tell you... So the pacing back and forth was just to show the predator side, right? The aggression side. So again, side note, just to be aware of as a speaker, if you are someone who paces a lot, you move a lot, be aware of that, that the audience is reading into that. Like where, where is he going? What is she doing? What is going on right now? Uh, so it's okay to move some, but move with purpose. Again, because what's coming up for me is a really important message for you. And if I act authentically, honestly in front of you, you're not going to listen to me. And I hope you listen to this, because it's really important. I want you to have a look around you right now. That isn't a piece of rhetoric. I mean, actually look around you right now. And, turn, and look at the back, because there's lots of people here, OK? There's a lot of you. There's about a 1,000 of you here today. Understand this. You're designed to be indifferent to each other. You're designed today to really just hang out with the people that you came with. You'll spot a few others who are like you, your tribal members. Yeah? Oh, brilliant. Yeah, nice. Yeah, great, isn't it? Yeah? But you've seen some people already today, and they triggered predator in you, enemy. And more important, you know who they are. Yeah. 
And you've also met some people today, the majority here, and you don't know who they are. You're indifferent to them, and you're never going to meet them. And you've got a brilliant, life-changing idea for you, your family, your, your town, your city, your world, your universe, and beyond that, if you've got an intelligence way beyond mine, which undoubtedly, together, you certainly all have. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. You've got some brilliant ideas, and they've got some brilliant ideas, but you're designed to be indifferent to each other. So I'm asking you today, I'm challenging you, and in fact, I'm just going to beg you. Okay? I'm just going to beg you. I need you to be more inauthentic with each other today. <laughs> Not just today, tomorrow, the day after, and for the rest of your life, because if you don't choose behaviors beyond your natural instincts for what you like and don't like, you will miss brilliant opportunities in your life. And if you don't go up to somebody today who you know at a gut level you're indifferent to, they hold nothing for you, your instinct, you've smelt it, you've tasted it, you've seen it, you've heard it, you know they are nobody. If you don't go up to them today and act and perform like their friend and ask them about their big idea, and act and perform like you're listening, you will miss something that is going to change your life. So I'm begging you to act anything else but indifferent to the people around you today. If, I believe, we could all be a little more inauthentic with each other now and again, we might find that we are... Notice again what he's doing. Slowing down, getting quieter, and kind of getting to some like, this is the meat of the message. This is the key points, the key ideas, the key takeaways that he wants you to have. And so in order to do that, slows down, softens his voice, and causes the audience to lean in. So much more than what we think we are. We might find that we are so much more than we actually are. Because I truly believe it isn't your innate ideas or abilities or behaviors or skills or position that defines or has to define who you really are. It can be the conscious choices that you make in spite of all of that. Good. Great talk there. Very, very good, Mark. All right, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that speech breakdown with Mark Bowden's TEDx talk. Hey, if you like that, don't forget to like the video below, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to turn the notifications on, that little bell. Click that bell so that you don't miss out whenever new videos do come out. All right, my friends, thanks for hanging out with us. We'll catch you next time. You're awesome.